Hey everybody and welcome back to Twin Cherry Studio and with Super Mario 3D All-Stars coming out next weekend I'm a little bit impatient so I decided to dust off my copy of Super Mario Sunshine whack it into Dolphin Emulator and I'm going to show you how to make Super Mario Sunshine from looking like this to looking and playing like this So sit back, relax, get those knickers out of a twist, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and let's just dive into it shall we? So the first thing we're going to do to make Super Mario Sunshine run a lot better is to use the settings in Dolphin itself. So when you open Dolphin, go to the Graphics tab here and click it, and it will open up this section here. Now, the first thing you can change is the back end, the graphics API that you're going to use. The one that you definitely want to avoid is the software renderer, but I use Direct 3D11 because that's the one that I've had the least problems with when playing games. Some people prefer OpenGL, some people prefer Vulkan. It all depends on your system and your experience when playing games. And just to show you the difference, here is Super Mario Sunshine running on OpenGL. And here it is on Direct 3D11. Not much difference. The only thing I really noticed is that the cutscenes run a lot smoother. So next thing, we go over to the Enhancements page and we look at the internal resolution. It's set to native here. Now, I set it to 1080p, three times native. But if you're feeling extremely saucy and you have the rig to do it, you can set it to 4K, which will make it look like this. Now, it runs fine at the minute, but once I add the other enhancements, it's going to knock that FPS value down because my screen and my rig isn't good enough. Now, it does look fine and fantastic like this, but once I add these extra enhancements, it's going to make the FPS drop. So let's watch as I put the anti-aliasing onto 8 times SSA, and you see my FPS has massively dropped there. So I'm going to switch it back to 1080p. And there we go, we're running smooth. And then the anisotropic filtering, I'm just going to walk it all the way up to 16. And you can play around with these as much as you want until you get one that runs smooth on your system and runs at a solid 25 frames per second, which doesn't sound very impressive, but back in the day, that's what they all run at. So if you want that natural experience, 25 frames per second is what you're going to want to hit. Now that all that is looking pretty and perfect and running smooth, the next thing I'm going to do is to make it widescreen. Because as you can see here, it's still in 4x3, and the GameCube was a 4x3 system, but we can make it go widescreen in a number of ways. So one of the ways to do this is to use the widescreen hack that's built into Dolphin by going to the graphics section again and clicking widescreen hack. But I do not recommend this because I've had a few problems with the textures all looking daft and looking a bit silly. So I don't use that one anymore. What you're going to want to do is to right click on your copy of Super Mario Sunshine, click properties and go to the bit where it says gecko codes. Then click download codes, and it's going to download five codes. I've already done it, so it's not added anything new here. And then there's one here that says widescreen. Click that and close it, and then relaunch the game. And now, as you can see, the game is currently in 16 by 9 widescreen and filling up the entirety of my screen, making it just a little bit of a better experience when playing. We are not finished there because we're going to add some custom textures just to add that little bit of extra spice to make the game that little bit extra saucy. To show you what I mean, I'm going to load the custom textures. And now, as you can see there, it is looking extra clean, extra crisp, and extra saucy. The text is clear. The textures around it all. Mario is looking fine. He's looking at his absolute best. Now, how do we get custom textures? I have already done a video on this, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you how to do it again. Now click the link titled Super Mario UHD in the description down below and it will take you to this page here which is the Super Mario Sunshine UHD Texture Pack. There is also another one that I like and is my favourite way to play the game and that's Super Mario Sunshine Painted Edition which kind of adds its own painted aesthetic to the game which I have shown before on this channel. And I'm going to show you how to get that and do that as well. So you can choose which ones you think is the best. This is the Super Mario Painted Edition here. As you can see, all the stars and everything it has its own custom features. And it feels like you're playing a custom version of the game. Whereas with the Super Mario Sunshine UHD pack, it just makes everything look crisp, clean and tight. And makes it look so much better if you're playing in 4K and you want to play in 4K. Okay, so to get the Super Mario Sunshine UHD ones, go to the link in the description down below. It's titled Super Mario Sunshine UHD. And then download link version 2.0.x, May 10th, 2020. Click that and it'll send you to a GitHub page and it will download this 7-zip file. Click save. 
and that will go to your downloads folder. Now to download the Super Mario Sunshine Painted Edition, go to the link in the description that's titled Painted Edition, and there you will see a link here that's the download pack, the Google Drive pack link. Click that, it'll open up Google Drive with a folder called GMS, right click that and click download. And then save that file to your downloads folder. Okay, so now you should have two files in your downloads folder, gms.7zip, which is the UHD textures, and gms 20 one z 0 which is the painted edition, which hasn't been updated since 2009, but still is a lot of fun to play. So we'll start with the UHD pack, which is a 7-zip file. If you haven't got 7-zip, go to the 7-zip website in the link in the description down below and download and install 7-zip. It's a really easy program to use and is the best Unwrap that there is out there. Right-click, click 7-zip, click, click the bit which says extract to GMS slash. And once it's finished, you'll have this GMS folder here. Right-click that, click copy. And then you're going to want to go to documents, Dolphin emulator, load, textures right click and paste it in this is a whopping two gigabyte file make sure i have load custom textures on by going to the graphics settings ticking load custom textures and ticking prefetch custom textures click close and launch super mario sunshine and as you can see it says there at the top custom textures loaded one thing the custom texture packs do not do is change any of the cutscenes they will be in the standard definition for free you can see it's loaded up and it's looking clear just to show you that it has loaded up, if I take it off again, you can see the A, the B, the C, and all the text doesn't look as clean. Click load custom textures, clean text, clean boxes, clean Mario. Now, if you want to get the painted edition, which is the one that I much prefer, go back to your downloads folder, and there is this folder here called GMS, blah, blah, blah. Right click, click on 7-zip, and click extract to GMS-2020091110T08. I'm not going to say it all again. And it will get you this folder here. Double click on that, and it will give you another GMS folder. Go back to Documents, Dolphin Emulator, Load, Textures, Delete the GMS file that you already have, because that is the UHD ones, or move that out so it's safe. Right click and paste in this version of GMS. Now, when we load Super Mario Sunshine, we have the special painted edition textures. There is a very custom feel. The boxes, they're all painted. The text isn't as HD, but I quite like this one because it looks like you're playing a custom version of the game and it's a lot of fun. This texture pack is not finished completely 100%, so there is a few problems with it. That's why most people prefer the UHD and 4K one, but I quite like this one. So it's up to you. Choose which one you like and play the game that way. Now let's talk about controls. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is controls and when I play the game, I play it with my GameCube controller and this GBROS adapter thing that I bought. And you just plug it in, configure your controller and you can play it with an official GameCube controller. But I know a lot of people don't have those just lying around the house. So I'm going to show you how to do it with an Xbox controller. Now, if you've already seen my video on how to configure your Xbox controller to play GameCube games on Dolphin, then you can skip this bit and get straight into the game and play it looking fantastic. If you've not seen that video, then I'm just going to go over it quickly for the sake of this video. So, go to the bit where it says controllers, click GameCube controllers, make sure it's a standard controller, click configure. Then the bit here, it says X input zero gamepad. Click refresh if it's not if you don't see your if you don't see your Xbox controller there, click refresh. Make sure everything is plugged in and all the drivers are up to date and things like that. Click refresh and it'll go to there. Now the buttons we have A, sign that to A, B, B, X, X, Y, Y. And for Z, I always use the right bumper or RB as it's called. Start button, start. Slowly move down to a bit where it says D-pad. Up, down, left right on the d-pad so to get these buttons you click on it and then press the button so as we can see there if i press a on my controller it will go bold to make sure that it's working if I press b my controller there we go we'll just make sure all the buttons are working up down left right on the d-pad the control stick is the analog stick so click it up click it move it down click it move it left click it move it right and then for the c stick you can do the exact same thing up down left right if you want to change the sensitivity the best way to do that is to calibrate it so you click calibration and you move your right analog stick round very slowly making sure to get all of the edges here and it makes a fat circle once it's done click finish calibration now you can see the red dot 
is where the simulation for the analog stick is and the black dot is where you are actually pulling it so when i pull my so when i pull my right analog stick all the way to the right the red dot is where it would simulate it on the gamecube controller so it gets that more authentic experience do you can do the same with the c stick as you can see i'm pulling it out here and it's telling me to calibrate so if i calibrate move that round make sure that every edge on my controller is being reached then click finish calibration and then when i do it again it's like that now for the triggers now for the back triggers you're going to want to click the l bit here click the back trigger and then you're going to want to click the l dash analog and click the back trigger the reason we do this is because super mario sunshine uses the spring triggers and you need to be able to hold the trigger down halfway and it to have a different reaction so when i press the trigger all the way down it goes like this but then when i press it a little bit or middle it goes like that that is very important when playing super mario sunshine so right trigger again use the right trigger and then r dash analog right trigger and we can move it up in increments to get a rumble motor to work which is something some people always ask me about you click the motor section here click on the blank bit it's going to come up with this menu go to motor left click select go to operators click r go to motor r click select click apply and then test it and there you go my rumble motor is done and that is your controller set up and ready to go now I've heard some people say that they want to play this game in 60 FPS. And from what I'm told, it only works on the North American version of the game. So if you have an NTSC version of the game, then you can do this. If you don't and you have a PAL version, like I have the European version because I'm from Europe and I have dumped this from my original copy of the game, then it's not going to work very well at 60 frames per second. And I'll show you why now. So if you have a North American version of a game, the way to get it to run in 60 frames per second is to go to the Wiki Dolphin page for Super Mario Sunshine and scroll down and then click the bit here where it says 2.760 FPS and it'll bring you to a gecko code. Now, as it says here, the gecko code makes cutscenes run very slow on non-North American releases and it is painfully slow on the eu version of the game so much so that i just don't use it because i'd rather play the game in 25 fps and just have the cutscenes run smooth and the way you add gecko code is that we take the code here not the bit where it says 60 fps pal whatever just the code right click kick copy right click on the game that you're going to be using so super mario sunshine click properties go to gecko codes click add new code and this one will call 60 fps pow right click again and click paste and the only thing that should be in here is the weird number code system click save and there it is 60 fps pow ticked click close now i'm going to show you why i don't recommend this if you have a european version of the game but i'm told it does work with a north american version of the game so if you have that feel free to test it out and let me know down in the comments if it works one fps it is going super slow on the cutscenes and it absolutely does not work and is not worthwhile once i get into the game it is running fine and smooth at 60 frames per second but with nintendo games you cannot skip cutscenes so it becomes an absolute chore to get through the cutscenes just to play the game at 60 frames per second and i'd rather just play it as it was intended everybody's different so if that's something you want to do then feel free to do it if not make sure you have a north american version of the game and that's it for this video if you use this guide and it's useful to you then please hit that like button it really does help this channel grow i want to get this out to as many people as possible so that they can enjoy this game in full 4k 60 frames per second uhd or however you set it up. I'm going to be playing in 1080p, probably with the painted edition graphics on, or if I get bored of that, I'll just switch over to the UHD ones. It really is that simple. Let me know down in the comments which texture packs you would use. Subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do.